Hi, I'm James the Light Guy, and today's an exciting video. We're going to talk about the 3D printer rather than normal lights today. And man, am I excited. So, like all of my other videos, I went ahead and I bought this with my own money because I've always wanted a 3D printer. And a few years back, I tried to buy one of the ones uh, that uses the spool of plastic and uses the hot nozzle to apply it and then build it up with deposition. This one uses a liquid resin that is cured with 405 nanometer wavelength uh, UV light. And there's a little LCD screen underneath the silver tank in there that will only allow the UV light to hit whatever spot is needed for that level. It is a very fun product. I'm going to pull this a little closer. One moment. Now that I've got in real close, let's take off the acrylic shield and talk about the components. Here we have our base plate on this arm. This raises and lowers into the resin as it prints. This reservoir can be removed with these two screws. And let me take that off. Underneath the reservoir, we can see the LCD screen. And under here, there is still some resin inside. We can see the clear plastic lens that the light shines up through. As the base plate lowers, it presses up against the bottom and it adds a 50 micron layer of plastic. That is 1 20th of a millimeter. And it will do that, actually this one printed in this direction, and it slowly raises up, presses back down, raises up, and it builds this up. I did virtually no finishing to this at all, and this is what the surface looked like. Let me get a closer view for you. Again, this is without any real finishing. I just cleaned off the excess um, resin with some isopropyl alcohol, and I tried to grind off the uh, support struts that were computer generated before I realized that I had already made a number of mistakes. You can see I couldn't clean up the inside very well. I also missed a bunch on my original CAD drawing. I've been using the free Tinkercad online, and in one of my next videos I will show a time lapse of building another version. This was just a test piece. This was my first time using a 3D printer and this came out surprisingly well and is really robust. Uh, I was pushing it to its limits and I finally managed to break it earlier. I'm really pleased with the amount of detail that this orange 10 uh, or longer orange 10 uh, SLA printer is capable of doing. The slicer program that Longer provides is pretty awful, but they do have an extension for another program that will work with this, and I need to try that out. We also picked up this recently, which is some LED strips. Uh, let's see if I can get it to focus here. One. There we go. Uh, whoa, bumped the camera. Uh, which goes to 405 nanometer. These UV LEDs will be part of our curing lamp, as well as some... Oh, I should zoom out a little bit. These are some flexible mirrored plates. We will make a curing box for our prints, and we'll be able to make all sorts of custom lamp holders and assemblies to play with in future videos. 3D printing takes a surprisingly long time. This is a fairly large piece, and it took 11 hours to print from start to finish. And because of the size of this reservoir, 
Uh, I had to refill it twice during the printing process to make sure that nothing went horribly wrong. Uh, this was a very inexpensive printer. I paid $1.99 for it on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description if you want to get it for yourself. It is awesome to play with. Um, I've messed up a few times on other prints where I was messing with the structuring and the piece broke off and then stayed in and it kept, yeah, it was bad. Um, as well as misprints where uh, one side would break off the support and as it pressed down it would keep rocking itself so it would squish one side and one side would become elongated. It takes a little bit of practice to get things right. I actually did my best job on my first try and it's been downhill from there, but um, I'm not giving up. The resin it uses, um, I buy the one that it recommends because I don't know any better. I don't know if anything else will work with this uh, properly. So for the time being, I'm sticking with what the manual says to get. Uh, these 500 gram, because they sell it by weight rather than by volume, this 500 gram bottle costs $20 and this used about half of the bottle to make. So this practice piece cost about $10 to make. So that gives you an idea of how expensive it will be to run this. Uh, talking about other equipment coming soon, uh, you may have seen this in a previous video. We finally got a good multimeter and purchased up a new meter for our 110 outlets. And uh, we have new 110 outlets. We're going to build a new studio, Studio 3.0, and it's going to be amazing. So that's all I have for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing prints uh, made in this in future videos. If you had a good time with me, hit that like button. Show me that I'm doing a good job. Talk to me in the, dis in the comments below. Let me know what you guys want to see, what you want to know. I love feedback from you guys. And stay tuned for the next, uh, for the next video. Like, subscribe, share, and as always, until next time, I'm James the Light Guy.